My name is Karen Edelblum, and I'm an assistant professor and chancellor scholar in the Department of Pathology and Center for Immunity and Inflammation at Rutgers New Jersey Medical School. Here at Rutgers, I run a research program focused on looking at Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. I train graduate students in the lab, and we are hoping to find new treatments for IBD and potentially one day find a cure. So the way that we're trying to approach finding a cure for inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, is we're looking at how the immune system interacts with the lining of the intestine, and those are the epithelial cells. And so by understanding how the immune cells and the epithelial cells interact, we're hoping that we can find ways to reinforce this critical barrier in intestinal function to prevent autoimmunity, which is what occurs um, in Crohn's disease patients. My decision to become a researcher actually happened very early on. Um, at the age of 13, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And on the day I was diagnosed, instead of asking, why me? Why did this happen to me? Um, I thought that this was kind of a sign of this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. Um, and so since then, I've been very narrowly minded and focused on um, getting to where I am today, to have a research lab, to study Crohn's disease, and to try to get to the point where um, hopefully no other teenagers would be in the same position that I was, so that if we could find a cure, then you know, all of this would have happened for a reason. We were really the first um, lab to show that one particular subset of T-cells that we look at, they're called gamma-delta T-cells, that they provide surveillance for the intestinal epithelium. We're one of the first to actually be able to image immune cells within the live intestine in mice, and we're using this to better understand their function. So if we look at their behavior and understand how they interact in their environment and they respond to different signals, whether those are inflammatory signals or from the bacteria that normally live in your gut, we're hoping that we can take advantage of understanding this behavior to give us an idea about the function of these cells that we has really remained unknown for the last 30 years. I love the ability to be able to um, train students and really kind of bring a face to what it is that we study. It's one thing to come into the lab every day and just you know, do science because you're trying to answer a particular question or because you have a goal in mind. But I think it makes it a lot more relatable when you actually see the face of the disease that you're studying so that you know that what you do on a daily basis is actually has the ability to positively influence somebody else's life. Being a scientist as well as a Crohn's disease patient is a very unique role for me to be in. It's definitely something that motivates you to come to work every day and it gives you a very different perspective on your research. Um, I've really made a concerted effort to bring in other um, young people and students that also have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis so that they can be empowered for their disease by doing, by actively taking part in research because of course you know, being more informed about your illness um, makes it a little bit easier to cope with the fact that you do have a chronic disease. And so I think this, this is a very um, unique but also very helpful aspect to our research because it ends up not only for the people that do have Crohn's or colitis that end up working in the lab, but the other people in the lab environment, I think it's, it's a little inspirational for them to be able to see you know, just how their work directly affects um, the IBD community. As you may know, in the current you know, funding climate, it's very difficult to secure uh, research funding, especially for preliminary projects that will lead to further funding down the road. And so, it's just starting out as a new investigator, you have a lot of really great ideas, but you don't necessarily have enough money to be able to fund not only the supplies, but also the personnel to be able to undertake some of these new and exciting studies. And so we don't want to be in the position where we can't study something that might lead to the next breakthrough because we don't have enough money to be able to address those questions.